thank you. too shabby not too shabby oh man just seeking beauty seeking beauty up here it's just I could fly the drone up here all day long it's just so nice to go exploring with up in the sky and ah oh, I just love it I love it okay I'm on my way to my brother's house going up there for the weekend and uh, I, but along the way I'm, I stopped at Copper Mountain here we're gonna be getting a little mountain run in in the snow and just got to take advantage of the elevation I think I I think copper's right at 9,000 uh, maybe a little above actually a little above 9,000 feet so definitely an elevation run which is good I like that and we're gonna be trying through the snow I think that it looks like they got maybe four or five inches of snow last night so also good because I've got the Solomon speed cross fives to trudge along and dig into that snow oh man this shoe is quickly becoming critical to the winter training lineup um, and I will say though I have this Solomon XA Alpine shoe that I is over a year old but I must say I made a slight mistake in buying this shoe last year I'm gonna use it forever and ever because I don't put too many miles into it very often because the lugs on the bottom are just not what I was expecting when I bought it uh, instead I should have purchased the Solomon snow cross 2 and anyway that's gonna be probably a shoe for 2020 I you know I don't need it this year but if I attempt some more snow runs down the road I'll be investing in that all right enough talking let's get up uh, into the snow and I think I'm gonna cross this bridge first right over here oh my goodness come on come on I was, uh, I was way off on the elevation, well, 700 feet. It's higher here than I remember. 9,700 feet at Copper Mountain. That's what I'm talking about. All right, up we go. I'm following a cross-country course, uh, cross-country skiing that is, and listen, I didn't know how much snow would be up here, and sure enough, I'm just getting a good, slow, first gear workout in. Probably going like 12 minutes a mile pace type workout. Uh, not breathing really hard yet, but my legs, baby, my legs, I feel the ankles working, the quads. Oh, this is crazy. All right, let's keep going.
believe it or not, uh, YouTube, <laughs> I am training for a marathon. It might not look like it. This is probably not your traditional training tactics, but uh, I am training for a marathon. And so I uh, will share more about this back in the car, but as to, you know, kind of my, my approach, my approach as I'm out here in the uh, winter wonderland. Ooh, baby. This is uh this is where I grew up snowboarding right here at Copper Mountain. Crazy. There we go. There we go. Okay, 7 miles, 12k and as I set out on the trails, yes, I am training for a marathon. It may not look like it, but I am. I'm just trying to be patient because I'm not running Boston, which is in April. I think London is also in April. Correct me if I'm wrong. And so it's like you can't stay at the top of the mountain for very long, meaning with your fitness level and being sharpened and meaning your legs are turning over fast and you have a little bit of that anaerobic development, um, that uh, anaerobic threshold is what it's called, where you're able to walk that fine line between aerobic and anaerobic and holding that line as long as possible for 26 miles. And so I'm just going slow, working on strength, focusing mentally on form, and that's like, I was like going 10, I think I was going about 10, 45 per mile like that's probably the slowest I've run in the last I don't know a long time uh, and so it's it anyway it's just like that patience with the aerobic development is so so key and through this attempt at a first fast marathon I will sharpen I will sharpen I promise I promise I'll go fast but I know for based on my experience knowing how my body reacts to speed work I know that I cannot sharpen too early in the training block or else I will peak too early and then I, it's like it's like I'll peak and then plateau and eventually crash and so anyway I'm a I'm just a big big fan and for everybody out there that's emailing me with your questions about training keep them coming and also for those that are interested in my coaching I'm not officially coaching right now I'm 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 discerning discerning you know how I love that word the possibility of coaching but my general thesis is the bigger the aerobic base the better and up here in the mountains that's how I like to build my aerobic base but you can build your aerobic base wherever you live by remaining as patient as possible and not sharpening too early that's that's what I'm saying that's all I'm trying to say all right shall we continue the journey see you in the mountains Doubling up <laughs> with Joseph. I found him. How far? How far is that loop? Oh, five miles. Five, oh, five miles. Yeah. What's that about? Eight and a half k for everyone outside the U.S. <laughs> oh man, just getting a little mountain running in. Yeah. <laughs> a good day. Yeah. Although that pace was a little fast for me. Yeah. <laughs> I just ski. <laughs> yeah, I did the ski run double. Not too, not the run run double. Yeah. <laughs> did you ski this morning? Just a little bit, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I found, I was like, I gotta find this place. Good evening. 
I gotta talk. I gotta talk a little quieter. Everyone else is asleep. It's 11 o'clock. I gotta go to bed because I am ridiculously tired. And last night on Strava, I mentioned that I would talk about doubling. So running twice in one day. And I wanted to give you my thoughts and my theory behind running twice in a day. But I can't do that tonight because I'm about to pass out and I am tired and this tea is keeping me awake. Uh, so forgive me, I cannot do it tonight, but I do believe a single video that is really well done that will talk all about doubling in a day is coming soon, maybe in the next 10 days, two weeks approximately, so stay tuned for that again. Thank you for your patience. I'm just, I, I, I'm literally falling asleep in the chair in there. Um, so, keyword, keyword, brother. Keyword is brother. And the question of the day, because I went for a run with my brother today, and the question of the day, when was the last time that you ran with a family, family member or friend? Okay, when you went out for a run with a family member or friend, what was it like? What was going through your mind? What was going through your heart? How was it? And as runners, I think we can often get into our uh, our tunnel vision where we just go running because it's a very, you know, it's kind of an independent sport. And that's what I love about it. Like you can push yourself as hard as you want and you can achieve goals. But I also think it's really important to push pause, push pause, and just step back from our daily individual training and meet up with people, meet up with friends and family members. So I would be curious to hear about the last time, maybe it was last week, maybe it was four years ago. Like, that's okay, that's okay. Like, we all get busy, all right? So think back and that would be amazing. Thanks for watching, thanks for coming, flying in Colorado with me today and running through the snow. And uh, again, I will get you that doubling video very soon. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.